Welcome, my name is Helen Wusterfeld. I'm a researcher of medieval manuscripts at Dr. Jörn Günther Rare Books in Basel. And with me today is Professor Dr. Gregory Clark. He is a well-known scholar on, in the field of medieval manuscripts, especially those of France and Flanders. Gregory, can you tell me what got you into manuscript studies? Well, the field seems to have chosen me. I had intended in my undergraduate and master's degree years to study late medieval German panel painting. I then came for the time for the doctorate, I went to Princeton. And there, John Plummer, who was half curator at the Morgan Library and half professor at Princeton, did a seminar in my second semester called Books of Hours based on the Morgan Library collections where he had the position of research fellow for art. And quite frankly, it was like a tidal wave that swept me about six miles. I simply succumbed, I happily surrendered, and I am thankful that he bowled me over. Since then, you have uh, published six books. Uh, you are a, a worldwide known scholar. You have published several more uh, articles. And you try to visit us at Basel almost each year. Why do you come here? You're a very welcoming institution, number one, and number two, some of the finest books available to for purchase, i.e. not in public or private libraries, pass through your hands. And there's a constant flow of manuscripts of very high quality, and it's always exciting to come and basically, as you know, I arrive and say, what have you got? And you've never disappointed me. You have now before you a book that was recently acquired by Jörn Günther and when you found out we had it you were quite excited and um, immediately said can I have all the pictures uh, can I come and study it and now it's here in your hands um, what did you experience? For 35 years I have wanted to see this book my own dissertation began in Amia and one of my artists of course migrated there and the book was an enigma because the photos that I had were very poor. Once I saw the book, opened it, and saw the pictures, instantly it clicked who the painter was. I knew two books by him, and the excitement was palpable because the artist is really, really fine, very distinctive, and the paintings are absolutely beautiful. And finally, this hole in my knowledge this that had been bothering me for three and a half decades was in an instant closed up, and that's why I kind of went crazy. The book contains 13 uh, miniatures of excellent quality. Two are by one painter and 11 by a second painter, both quite different. Can you explain a bit? Sure. This is the uh, Raising of Lazarus, which introduces the Office of the Dead, one of the key texts in a book of ours. This is a remarkable picture by the Master of Walters 219, whose career, as far as we can tell, unfolded in the Champagne. But what makes this picture so remarkable is that it's not just an image of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, which dominates the foreground. It's really a, a picture, a panorama of medieval life, because you then move to the middle ground. You have carts pulled by horses, a man on what looks like a donkey, a castle keep in a moat with a drawbridge, and then in the distance you have boatmen, probably fishermen, and then you have two uh, ships that sail um, on higher seas, all of it climbing upward rather than backwards, a very medieval convention. The artist in this respect is very retrospective, and that's a compliment. The second artist, the one who did the larger number, whom we show here, with the martyrdom of St. Catherine of Alexandria. His taste for haze along the horizon, very distinctive, and the shape of his a female figure's heads, which have a, a very um, sort of rounded, but also even slightly pear-like shape with a very prominent forehead. This identifies the artist who was extremely influential for later painters. So for example, Ghent Privileges Master and later the Kuwaiti V Master. He's a key figure in the development of painting in northeastern France. This so, is for you a key piece in your research and makes the Illuminator a pivotal character in your research. 
Absolutely. The composition goes back to Amiens manuscripts of the 1440s and late 1430s. And it was this version, that is, this artist's translation of his Amiens models, then was picked up by the Ghent Privileges Master and becomes has an afterlife all the way into the 1470s in the hands of the Ghent Privileges Master and his student or follower, the Ghent Gradual Master. And of course, I had, did not realize this until I saw the book. I looked at it, and when you finally got a chance to see it, and I thought, kapow, that's the link between Amiens and the Southern Netherlands, because the Ghent Privileges Master worked in Ghent and or Tournai in the Southern Netherlands. To wrap up this brief introduction that we have on the Book of Hours, the Fouquier Book of Hours, when you came here to see and study it, did it um, answer your expectations? The earlier artist is the Walters 219 master, and all of his books are associated with the Champagne. And this book is an outlier in his oeuvre, and he worked from about 1410 to 1425. So the book has, was, I think, done in two stages. The second stage is done in, I believe, Amiens or Haida by an artist for whom we know of, or I know, of two other books. And the thrill of this book was realizing when I looked at it that I was able to put three jigsaw puzzle pieces together and create an oeuvre with three manuscripts, two secular. And this book, the only one that is a liturgical or quasi-liturgical book. And of course, what makes my work exciting is trying to recreate the era, the artists, the patrons, and to do that, you have to, of course, put the jigsaw puzzle pieces together as best you can, and you never have all of them. Gregory, thank you so much for sharing your enthusiasm and your expertise about this book and its uh, exciting paintings. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real joy to be able to sit here with you and study the book together.